Thanks, Lonnie. We're using this. The mouse. Great. Uh, bienvenue in Montreal. Welcome to Montreal for all of you uh, who have come from elsewhere. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Lonnie. I'm going to talk about uh, EUS and its role as a complementary uh, uh, test to EBUS and also alone and try and show you some of the things that we're doing in Montreal to uh, uh, add additional value to EUS for lung cancer staging. These are my disclosures. So minimally invasive staging and it's nice to follow a great talk. Uh, most of the work has been done for me. EBUS in the US, I think most of you already know this. Uh, they can be used alone or combined and I'll try and show you how they're uh, complementary and how you can uh, help one and the other with that. Uh, this is the mediastinum. It's uh, uh, very complex and uh, Dr. Silvestri uh, showed us well which uh, techniques can biopsy uh, which nodes and I'll try and uh, show you a few things um, that you can do uh, with EUS that may not be uh, well known uh, uh, to everyone in this room. This is a typical uh, biopsy of a 4R lymph node, a small node in a peripheral uh, uh, T1 uh, N0 uh, tumor. As Dr. Silvestri said, this patient was high risk for surgery uh, with a VO2 max at around 10. And so we wanted to prove that they were N0 before going to surgery or radiation. And this was a positive uh, N2 node. Uh, Uh, these are uh, 8L lymph nodes. Uh, uh, these are posterior to the pericardium uh, between the upper and lower uh, pulmonary vein on the left side, left lower lobe tumor. These are CT and PET negative lymph nodes. You see the aorta right behind, and both of these nodes were positive uh, for non-small cell in a uh, CT PET negative mediastinum. EUS upstaging, uh, this uh, is a small study looking at uh, patients with resectable tumor on CT. Uh, EUS was able to change the management in eight of these patients, uh, upstaging to stage four, 3A, th uh, 3B, and uh, 2 to 3A, and that's really uh, based on uh, lymph nodes and metastasis that were biopsied. Uh, they claim that uh, EUS led to avoidance of a futile thoracotomy in about 14% of patients uh, with CT finding of a resectable tumor. Again, this is an old study. Uh, PET was uh, not used in all of these patients. What about if you combine EBUS and EUS? Uh, what is the additional value to you? 160 patients with enlarged mediastinal lymph nodes. Uh, EBUS had an 85% uh, success rate at uh, uh, correctly uh, diagnosing uh, these lymph nodes. This is not in staging, this is just diagnostics. EUS 78% when they combined the two, uh, the, uh, there was a 97% success rate at diagnosing the cause of enlarged mediastinal lymph nodes. Uh, small study looking at 33 patients with mediastinal adenopathy. 119 lymph nodes were sampled, 59 by EUS and 60 by EBUS. Uh, uh, adding uh, EBUS over EUS added 11 additional positive nodes and 12 for EUS over EBUS. And they say when you put the two together, there was 100% accuracy. This is a well-known study uh, published in JAMA 2008, Wallace, looking at uh, patients with suspected lung cancer, uh, different uh, pre-operative uh, techniques. And you can see in the table, uh, the sensitivity of EUS alone was 69%. Sensitivity of EBUS FNA alone was 69%. And when you combine the two in the last uh, uh, line, you had a sensitivity of 93%. We looked at uh, mediastinal lymph node staging uh, with EBUS, EUS, uh, compared to surgical mediastinal staging, which would mean uh, uh, patients who uh, would have mediastinoscopy, plus or minus a mediastinotomy or VATS, uh, if five or six were positive on CT or PET. We looked at 166 patients over 30 months who were prospectively enrolled in this trial. Uh, EBIS uh, biopsied around 2.2 lymph node stations, EUS 1.7, the combined about 4, and SMS, which would be your surgical mediastinal staging, 3.1. All of the patients had all three procedures at the same sitting. Uh, prevalence of N2, N3 disease in this, uh, these are all potentially operable patients, and most had uh, non-enlarged uh, lymph nodes on CT. Prevalence of uh, N2, N3 was 32%. And you can see here uh, for these uh, pre-op patients, 72% uh, sensitivity for EBIS, se uh, 62 for EUS. And when you combine the two, we had a 91% sensitivity with a 97% accuracy. The patients that went on to surgery uh, because they were either non-N2, N3 uh, or non-metastatic, uh, EBIS, EUS compared to surgery, 90% negative predictive value for both. Uh, the combined technique was about the same. 
and surgical mediastinal staging was about the same as well, but don't forget we've already removed all the N2 and 3 uh, M1 patients uh, before uh, this cohort. And uh, overall, we were able to prevent a futile thoracotomy or futile VATs in about 24 uh, patients uh, in whom uh, normal uh, surgical mediastinal staging was negative. And so I would say, uh, at least in our study, and, and uh, there's other studies looking at that, I think that uh, uh, I would agree with Dr. Silvestri that EBUS EUS, one or the other or both, uh, should be your first line test for lung cancer staging. And that's coming from someone who does mediastinoscopy. Uh, we're, we recently looked at uh, endoscopic and mediastinal staging uh, uh, compared to a uh, surgical mediastinal staging uh, or a, a perfect mediastinoscopy, meaning a, a mediastinoscopy and a, a VATS, which had 100% accuracy. And uh, we looked at that in 327 patients in our center. And you can see that EBUS, uh, EUS versus uh, surgical uh, versus cervical mediastinoscopy uh, upstaged patients 6% of the time. And there was a change in treatment plan also in 6% of patients, uh, showing that EBUS in the U.S. is probably better than uh, even the best mediastinoscopy in the world, which doesn't really exist. I won't go through this because uh, Dr. Silvestri uh, did, and I'll just show you uh, the next slide, uh, which is the new uh, guidelines from the ESGE, uh, ERS, and ESDS, uh, which just came out uh, in the last few months, a combination of EBUS with real-time uh, transbronchial needle aspiration and EUS with final aspiration with use of an EUS scope or EBIS scope is preferred ov over either test alone. Um, again, this is a greater recommendation C. And uh, if combination is not available, uh, EBIS should be the, the first line test. So <coughs> these are the lymph node stations, and Dr. Silvestri uh, showed these uh, very well. Uh, these are the techniques that can biopsy uh, these different lymph node stations, and I think that uh, these tools are really complementary because if you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And if you can work uh, together with your colleagues in gastroenterology and thoracic surgery and radiology, you're obviously going to give the best uh, test uh, or the best workup uh, for each specific patient. And this is the way I like to uh, biopsy uh, mediastinal lymph nodes. Uh, you can see uh, EBIS gets all of those around the airway, EUS gets those around the esophagus. And as Dr. Silvestri said, um, Station six uh, is typically done by surgery. We didn't like that because we were doing everything by needle technique. So we went to the animal lab and then we went to the humans and we developed this technique uh, where we biopsy station six lymph nodes uh, using EUS through a very far approach. And I'll just show you how that works. Um, very rarely do you need to biopsy station six. Usually uh, uh, when six is positive, four L is positive two, but there are certain patients left upper lobe tumors that have six alone or five alone, you want to make sure that they might get neoadjuvant pre-op or maybe not be operated at all. And uh, out of 274 cases in this study, only 4.4 needed uh, station six biopsy due, due to isolated nodes. And you'll see here, that's the aortic arch. Uh, I'll see if I can show you. That's the left subclavian artery. Here's the pulmonary artery. And here's that station six lymph node in the periaortic area. And how we get this is through a very far approach, about five six centimeters above the aortic arch, pass our needle out into the mediastinum and try and hit those nodes out there. And I'll just show you a quick video. You see the needle is bent within the mediastinum. We're moving very far. And when we pass through, then we turn the scope. And with that, we're going to be in that node, even though we passed outside of the aortic arch and are able to biopsy station six. Uh, we are pretty good at this, and other people around the world are now doing this. Uh, two patients were not biopsied, one because of a, a large aneurysm, and the other with a porcelain uh, aorta, which uh, made me pretty nervous. Uh, but we've had no morbidities, and we've done over 60 of these now. How we've moved in our center from uh, surgical mediastinal staging, or mediastinoscopy here, and Chamberlain here, to EBUS EUS and Orange. Over the years, you can see we're almost at 100% now of EBIS US. Last year in our center, uh, we did two mediastinoscopies. Uh, we're doing over 1,000 lung resections. And you can see that because we've now introduced needle techniques, we're also staging many more patients. And as Dr. Silvestri said, it's not about how you do it, but it's the fact that you do it. And because we're doing needle techniques, we can now biopsy many, many more patients and actually take patients to the operating room who need operations, not those who don't need operations. So I think that the cost is less, and, uh, and it's definitely uh, something that's more doable. I'll just talk to you a little bit about other uh, uh, uses of EUS for lung cancer. 
Uh, this is for a small, uh, this is for tumors that are not able to be biopsied by other techniques, a uh, technique we've developed. Uh, patients that have tumors in proximity to the mediastinum, in front of the vertebral column, near major vessels behind the heart where it's too dangerous to do a tTNA, uh, or uh, EBIS and e, uh, has been negative, and uh, radial has been negative, and navigation has been negative, and we were able to do some of these, the ones that at least are around the esophagus by EUS. And you can see here, uh, over 31 months, uh, we had uh, uh, 1,200 patients and only 55 needed uh, this uh, EUS lung biopsy because they were not able to be biopsied by other techniques. Uh, mean size was five centimeters, and you can see there was uh, even eight millimeter nodes. And uh, you can see here that we had no uh, pneumothorax, even though we're passing the uh, visceral and parietal pleura in almost every patient, uh, no pleural effusion, no hemoptysis, no death. All the patients were followed for 30 days. This is a typical tumor. Radiologists felt it was hard to get to because of the spine here. And this would be a very far uh, area of lung to pass. And you can see that we can easily see that on EUS and biopsy that. This uh, lesion had three trans thoracic needle biopsies, all with uh, significant pneumothorax. Had two linear EBIS, uh, one radial EBIS, and all negative. And uh, with EUS, we were able to see it. Here's the aorta, and here's the uh, lesion on the EUS, and that was uh, adenocarcinoma. This is a small hamartoma, biopsied also by uh, uh, EUS. And this is a uh, ground glass opacity, which uh, in, in a very, very high risk patient who didn't want to operate. Uh, before having tissue diagnosis, as you can see, uh, coronary artery surgery, uh, very bad COPD, and this ended up being a lipidic carcinoma. And here you can see it very well on uh, EUS. EUS is also good uh, for T stage. I won't go into it here because we're short on time and it's quite complex, but uh, you, if, you're, if you're considering operating or sending a patient to your surgeon uh, for a tumor that may be T4 on CT or MRI, uh, EUS or, or TE by your cardiologist might be a good way to evaluate aortic arch invasion, uh, cardiac invasion, uh, diaphragm, and spine. And uh, this is just to show a quick uh, uh, case, 68-year-old female came in with hoarseness, PET-positive node in station 5. You can see here this, the PA is labeled, the aorta is labeled, station 5 is labeled here. And we routinely biopsy station 5 uh, by EUS. This has been described with EBIS as well by Majid and the group in Boston in a transvascular approach. But uh, with EUS, you don't have to hit any vessel. You can go right between the aortic arch and the PA, and we, we biopsy these five all the time. And this, uh, I cut it out because I was going to be short on time, but this is the left adrenal biopsy on a CT and PET negative uh, uh, adrenal gland, and we saw it uh, on EUS as a routine staging. When we're staging, we look at the liver, the adrenals, everything, the whole mediastinum. It looked a little fat. We biopsied it, came back adenocarcinoma. It was a right upper lobe tumor. Mediastinal nodes were negative on PET and CT. I presented a tumor board, and the oncologist didn't believe it. So we had to take the patient back, did the EUS again, and it's still positive. And after two times, then they agreed that the patient was uh, stage four. And I think in the old days, a lot of us would have operated on these patients and in six months end up with a widely metastatic disease. So in summary, uh, EUS is complementary to EBUS. It's really good for a 2L, in my hands, uh, 5 and 6, uh, 8 and 9. Uh, we like to get the celiac axis in lower lobe tumors. Uh, for liver mets, it's great. Adrenal glands both sides. Uh, EUS uh, combined with EBUS will allow you for, to do a complete endosonographic mediastinal staging. And uh, EUS can be used to biopsy difficult to reach pulmonary nodules and can be used in uh, T staging. Thank you very much for your time.